If we take a particle and situate it at the origin of an xz coordinate system, then launch this particle with a velocity v at an angle alpha, what happens? Well, firstly, we need to think about what forces are involved. In our model here, we're going to assume there's no air resistance, which means that we're only left with a gravity force. Now, if we actually project our particle, we see you get this arc shape. Our goal now is to find the curve to which forms this arc. The first thing we're going to do is look at our x and z components independently and form parametric equations. Therefore, we're going to need to split our velocity into its respective x and z components. To do this, we're going to pull out this simple triangle here and use some basic trigonometry with the velocity as the hypotenuse, where we find we get a positive v cos alpha in the x direction and a positive v sine alpha in the z direction. As we now just have the independent components in the x and z directions, we can start to look at the parametric equations themselves. So, if we start with the z parametric equation, we're always going to start with force equals mass times acceleration. In our case here, acceleration being z double dot. Then looking at our diagram, the only force we have is minus m times g. Now, quite clearly, we can take out a factor of m from both sides. To find z, we need to understand that z double dot is the second derivative of z in terms of time. Therefore, if we integrate with respect to time, we find we get minus gt plus the constant c. Now evaluating at t equals zero, we see that the constant is just v sine alpha. Now integrating with respect to time again, we see that we get z equals vt sine alpha minus a half gt squared plus some constant c. But then if we evaluate t at equals zero again, we find that this constant is zero. Now starting to perform the same procedure, but with the x direction. As we're modelling without air resistance, this f term is just zero, meaning we get x double dot equals zero itself. Therefore, integrating with respect to time, we see that we get this constant c, which we can just draw to be v cos alpha. Then integrating again, we get that x equals vt cos alpha plus a constant c. But then again, this c term vanishes because when evaluated at time equals zero, we find that c equals zero. So now we have found our parametric equations of our projectile being launched with respect to time. How do we form a single Cartesian equation with just x and z coordinates? Well, we're going to want to eliminate this t variable. The easiest way to do this will be manipulating our x direction equation. So we get that time is just x over v cos alpha. Now we can just substitute this in to our big z equation. Now if we expand our brackets, and cancel out some of our terms, we find we get this expression for z. Then, after making one simplification to get tan alpha, we've actually formed the trajectory equation, where z equals x tan alpha minus g x squared over 2v squared cos squared alpha. Thus, we have produced an equation for our curve with no dependence on time. Now I'm going to pose you a slightly different question. Again, in an xz field, if we projected a particle from an origin with a set velocity, but at every single different angle possible, what would the overall bounding curve be of all these projections? Well, this bounding curve is called the envelope equation, and we're going to look at how to derive it. We're going to start with our trajectory equation that we just derived, and we're going to be looking at eliminating the alpha variable from our overall equation as we're looking at every angle possible. So firstly, we're going to change our 1 over cos squared alpha into a sec squared alpha. Then, using our trig identities, we can just change this to 1 plus tan squared alpha, which is starting to look like a quadratic equation in terms of tan alpha. Now what we're going to do is evaluate our equation at an ambiguous point, being capital X, capital Z. Now, we're going to do some simplification. So, if we multiply our whole equation by 2v squared, then expand our brackets, and finally move all of our terms all onto one side. We see here that we've actually got a quadratic equation in terms of tan alpha. So if we draw our a, b and c coefficients, and then use the quadratic formula as shown here, we start to form a solution for tan alpha. 
Once again, we're going to run some simplification. So if we are square our term inside of our brackets, and then take a factor of 4 out of the square root, and then we see that this 2 cancels. Now, we're just going to pull out the discriminant and look at this independently. As this is being square rooted, if it's negative, we'll have imaginary roots and there'll be no solutions. If it's zero, there'll be one root and one solution. And if it's positive, it'll have two roots, so many solutions. Looking at how this relates to our envelope equation, we see that if it's positive, it sits within the boundary. If it's zero, it is the boundary. And if it's negative, it's outside the boundary. So we want the case where it equals zero, as we're looking to find this equation of the boundary. As gravity is just a constant, we've got to what we were trying to achieve, an equation with just x, z and phi components. Now, we're just going to want to simplify to get z on one side and x on the other. So we notice we can divide through by x squared, and then expand our brackets, then divide everything by 2g v squared, then, if we get z independent on its own side, we notice one final simplification on the left-hand side fraction, that v squared is a factor, we get our final equation for the envelope equation, which is that z equals v squared over 2g minus gx squared over 2v squared. And this equation represents this red borderline here, and is known as the envelope equation. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please share it, and if you're not already, please like and subscribe to this video. Cheers.